Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from secret sovereigns to surly strangers. And today we're talking about Sunni. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Excellent. I'm ready to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Indeed. I am as well. The so, fifth edition, William. <laughs> that's the only one we really... Well, that's not true. We talk about the We other talk ones about too. the other ones, but this yeah, is a fifth edition it, podcast. It Welcome. definitely is. Welcome to the year of the Beholder, everyone. Indeed. Today you is will. not a Beholder episode, but we no, will be not. building it at the back of the episode. It's true. Uh, we're building a Beholder. So stay tuned to the end Very if you want to check that out. Very curious about what I beam we're going to come up with today, but let's yes. get into it. So... We've talked about a lot of deities and demigods, demigods on the show. Um, gods of war, destruction, justice, dragons, and magic. But day, today we were taking a look at a deity with a much less talked about domain and sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Today we were covering Sunni, goddess of love. Ooh, <laughs> the goddess of love. Is this our Valentine's Day episode? This is our Valentine's Day episode, hey, yes. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day, yeah. whether you got well, one I mean, or not. It's not actually on Valentine's Day. I think this comes out on the 2nd of February, but close enough. This is the close enough to Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> indeed. Welcome. Indeed it is. Welcome. Uh, also known as Lady Firehair, the Lady of Love, the Princess of Passion, Sunni is also the goddess of beauty, passions, and delights of the senses. Ooh, okay. Both benevolent and whimsical, Sunni is a chaotic good deity and a greater deity at that. Make no mistake, though she may seem frivolous, soft, and superficial, she is a major power to be reckoned with and a true and valuable force for good in the world of D&D. A great metaphor for love. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Debatably, she is actually more than a singular goddess. It is said that Hanali Selenil, the elven goddess of love and beauty, may be but an aspect of Sunay Firehair. Ooh, okay. But this is debatable. Yeah, because the elves won't accept a non-elf looking... <laughs> right. Oh. So more on that later, though. <laughs> um, it's time to kick off this February with a perfect addition to your Valentine's Day inspired one shot game. So let's get into it. All right. <laughs> Sunni Firehair is said to be the fairest of all the powers in all the cosmos. When she is represented in art and song, she's depicted as the most beautiful woman in the realms with sweeping radiant red hair and incredible charms. As for her actual appearance, Sunni appears rarely to mortals. When she is seen, though, it is as a human female of unearthly beauty clad only in a diaphanous silken gown and her impossibly long sweeping red hair, which often assumes the appearance of flames. While she always has red hair, her appearance changes as her whim dictates. Perhaps her appearance is always what the beholder deems to be the most beautiful display possible. Whether her skin is golden, mahogany, darkest amber, or ivory, and her eyes the color of honey, the sky, deep forest green, or chestnut, you will know that before you stand, Sunni, beauty incarnate. Wow, a, a really pretty fire genasi. Yeah, it's yeah. Just the, come the sure. hair. Yeah, the hair, yeah. Alternating between deep passions and shallow flirtations, Sunni has been romantically linked with many of the Faerunian powers in the myths and the, of the realms. The Lady of Love enjoys attention and sincere flattery and avoids anyone who is horrific or boorish. Okay. <laughs> uh, like, just because uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, like you already said, uh, horrific? I like, think horrific, it ten Okay, so number one, D&D kind of has a problem where, like, ugly tends to get equated with evil. Yes. Which is, which is no bueno. I'm not into that. No, that's and not think, very fair, yeah, is it? Yeah, it's not very fair. But I think when it comes to Sunni, it's, it's more about, like, are you a horrific person? Okay, yeah, because so she's she's staring into the windows of your soul exactly. to see it yes, and to so. judge you. <laughs> but nine in nature, she's not one to hold grudges and always forgives minor transgressions, and she delights in rewarding her followers with the joy of unexpected love and affection. Mm -hmm. Lady Fire, Lady Firehair truly loves her followers, who in turn manifest and protect beauty in the world. Okay, cool. It's yeah. not about what you look like. It's about what your soul yeah. looks like. Although, like, her, her um, clergy do tend to be beautiful people. So there's, like, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a little bit of a double standard. It's, yeah, going a little on. bit of a double standard. Okay, going on. she's mostly a dope person, but no one's perfect. <laughs> she, she's she's just a corporate douchebag, just like all the rest of them. It's like we're trying to sell a brand. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, she's the goddess of beauty in all its forms, not just pleasing sights, but also enchanting sounds, luxurious tastes and scents, and the exquisite pleasures of the flesh, from a lover's caress to the brush of silk on the skin. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, beauty is not 
skin deep in the eyes of Sunni and her followers. It issues from the core of one's being and shows one's true face to the world, whether fair or foul. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. It should also be noted that Sunni is the goddess of all forms of love and not just romantic love. In some ways, she is a kindness and compassion deity as well, both encouraging her followers to act with love in their hearts on a daily basis and living by this tenet herself. I'm the goddess of scout units. <laughs> Help that old lady across the street. Get exactly. That, get that badge. Uh-huh. Right. She has been noted to selflessly rescue others and thwart evil on many occasions, which has garnered her both many allies and many enemies. Okay, but it sounds like those are the people you have the allies and enemies you want. Exactly. You yes, know? Okay. Absolutely. Aside from those who despise love and beauty as a manifestation of weakness, the Church of Sunni is widely loved throughout Faerun and has many adherents to its teachings. The Sunnite faith is a particularly popular one in large metropolitan areas and among the aristocracy. Those of a literary or artistic bend, as well as people falling in love or looking for life mates, also often venerate Lady Firehair. Okay, so there are many poems written from mm -hmm. bards across yeah. the land. She's about definitely Lady a goddess Fire. of bards and artists and stuff. Goddess, yeah. goddess of bards. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, as most Sunnites are seen as flighty, vain, and superficial, but also basically harmless, the Church of Sunni has less influence than its prominence might otherwise suggest. So it's interesting. Like she is a very powerful goddess in her, mm -hmm. and, a, and a power in her own right, and her clergy is very uh, prolific. But because of its reputation, it's not as doesn't have as much like standing or respect necessarily. Not that it's disrespect. It's just like L love not... is love is fickle and love is fleeting. That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, sure. And, and that's how the followers be. Exactly. They're, They're not like showing it. up to fucking game night. They're yeah. the reason you're rescheduling. Exactly. Get them out of here. Damn Sunites. You're so beautiful Sunites, <laughs> but you won't fucking show up to role play. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, the followers of Sunni have the negative reputation of being hedonistic and decadent, and so they are to a degree. But her worshippers seek out these pleasures in life not out of mere decadence, but because the experience of pleasure is to touch is the touch of Sunni herself, and is thus considered a divine experience. Yikes! Which that's a it's sense. a slippery slo slope, but like <laughs> sounds like I it. understand the concept, but it seems like a way too slippery slope. Yeah. Um, more than that, her priests are compelled to foster beauty in the world, and they do so by creating art, by acting as patrons for promising talents, and by investing into merchants who bring luxuries from far off places that have never seen satin or tasted a luscious wine. The idea here is that they are privileged. They are a privileged and indulgent bunch, but they are not selfish or self-serving. They want to make the world a better, kinder, more comfortable, and beautiful place for everyone they meet. Okay. So, so uh, lots of pillows. Lots of pillows. Soft lots of places silk, to rest. Lots of fine foods and cheeses. And che cheeses. Grapes. <laughs> Grapes. Procured meats. Nice mahogany. Mahogany. A cedar block for scent. I'm with it. Yeah, no cedar. Flower cool. petals. I, I picture them as gardeners. Yeah, potpourri. A lot of gardening going on. Sure, yeah, absolutely. The experience has to start the moment you walk through the threshold of like whatever property line you're yeah. about to go on. Yeah, so sure. if you're going to a church of Sunni, you're going to get hit with that jasmine, that, mm -hmm. that scent. Mm -hmm. They're going to be burning incense. They're going to have candles going True. with True. essential oils. But like also like... Uh, a group of Sunnite, like, clergy or priests or paladins or whatever might venture out to a provincial town that's maybe, like, down on its luck and doesn't have a great economy with the goal of, like, let's beautify this place and how do we do that? Well, we need to create, you know, get rid of corruption. We need to uh, create better, like, uh, what's, what's like, projects for the city. We need to bring in more economy and stuff. So it's, like, on one hand, like... Maybe their motives are seem kind of shallow, but like their methods are actually really great. So <laughs> I like uh I like how this subtext there's there's a few there's a few read between the lines things going on here. Yeah. But one thing that was up front that I like was we are not down for evil. So if you want a cleric, a Sunite cleric, that Warhammer is probably being he, swung in the name of love. Yeah, to exactly. Those and that even are, even then, I would imagine a lot of Sunite cler clerics are the pacifist type. Okay, yeah. So, so when when like so a, no weapon when a drider rolls up on you, it's okay. Oh, so no like all stick buffs, to the spell, all, all buffs, all support. I was gonna all, say it's yeah, probably still cool, like, cool to slay evil, but it, it's not so much that it, it's like cool it's cool to watch others slay evil <laughs> while you help them with your like, words and magic. Sometimes you have to, and that's you know they understand that, but like they're not out there trying to go smite. But there is an order of paladins which we'll get into. 
later. <laughs> I see uh, here on your record an act of violence. Well, that dragon was going to kill me and yeah. eat me. Yeah, that's so fair. That's fair. I stabbed it. So <laughs> as, as worshippers of the goddess of love, the followers of Sunni are believers in romance, true love winning overall, and following one's heart to one's true destination. Mm-hmm. Faded matches, impossible loves, and ugly ducklings becoming swans are all in the purview of Sunni. Her priests consider loveliness to be one of their greatest callings, and all are trained in uh, comportment, fashion, and cosmetics. <laughs> Indeed, so talented are Sunni's priests in the creation of beautiful appearances that many take pride in their ability to present themselves as stunningly attractive uh, as possible. This is cool. This is like a um, advantage on disguise kit and stuff oh, yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Doing makeup. Yeah. Hell yeah. It'd be cool to be like a, a, a cleric of Sunni that went more with like a trickery type domain where it's like you're using your beauty and your stuff to infiltrate uh, corrupt like politi- political entities, and, right? Like, yeah, and, like, undo that or like, survive the Hunger Games or that. Yeah, sure. Peta, Peta God. comes up a lot these days. I don't know why. <laughs> when did this happen? He can <laughs> use his cake skills to yeah, hide absolutely. himself in the mud it's or whatever true. and live. P- Peta was a Sunite. I'm just here living. Peta Peta's a like Sunite. a bakery Sunite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I it's, make delicious you know, cakes and yeah, disguise and myself beautiful. for yeah. survival. Exactly. It's art. It's All art. Right. It's beauty. It's love. Sunni's dogma <laughs> is thus. Number one, beauty is more than skin deep. Number two, believe in romance as true love will win overall. Number three, follow your heart to your true destination. Number four, love none more than your more than yourself except for Sunni, and love yourself in, and lose yourself in love of Lady Firehair. Number five, perform a loving act each day and seek to awaken love in others. Respond to love at least once a day. Whoa. (laughs) Six, (laughs) encourage beauty wherever you find it. Seven, acquire beautiful items of all sorts and encourage, sponsor, and protect those who create them. And finally, keep yourself as comely as possible and attractively displayed as situations warrant. Man, I know uh, these these are cool, but what about the sex? <laughs> I mean, that's part of that. it. That's part. <laughs> like, it's alluded to. That's part of it. But that's not like, that's... That's not the, no, I know. the end goal. When I was talking about undertones earlier, I was yeah. like, I'll save that one for right before the short rest. Let's go to short rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, be sure to check out Super, Super Quest, Quest Saga. Saga, a future fantasy 5th edition D&D actual play podcast home brewed and dungeon mastered by yours truly, me, and set in space. And I play in it, along with your special guest Jake and friend of the show, Josh Freeland. You can find it on YouTube, iTunes, or anywhere else you can get your podcasts. Super Quest Saga! We've returned. Indeed we have. We're back. T- we're back. In we're back to love. Temple of love that is the dungeon cast. Some old short rest <laughs> energy all through this episode. <laughs> That's so true. We love you guys. Um, if you love us, Tell us, because we're not shy. Yeah, we love we love to hear about your love. <laughs> we love to hear about your love, especially on this episode. To, yes. um, if you comment, the episode of love. If you comment uh, that you love us below, we're, we'll respond we, with an "I love you too." We will no. There's a that nice love icon that you can click on every comment. I'm going. We'll 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 hit the heart. I will write the. I, I will okay, write that fine. I love you. All right, that's fine. All right. As one would expect, soon nights are rife with celebrations and holidays. With green grass and Midsummer Night serving as the two most prominent Sunite holy days, celebrated with a great deal of outdoor frolicking with nightlong flirtatious chases through forests and parks. Hell yeah. <laughs> Individual That's temples. That's shit I'm about. Indiv- Fucking role play it right now, baby. No. Individual temples celebrate numerous local holidays as well. At least once a month, the Church of Sunni holds a grand revel, a large party with dancing, poetry, recitation, and heart-rendingly beautiful or soulfully rousing music to which outsiders are invited with the intent to attract converts. And I'm sure it works really well. Yeah. It's like, you want this all the time, don't yeah, you? Don't you? I can see Isn't it in this your awesome? eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Another temple-specific celebration held by Sunni clergy is called A Feast of Love. Mm. It is a more intimate, quiet affair, open only to the faithful, who lie on couches and indulge in liqueurs, appetizers, and sweet pastries with lone dancers while lone dancers perform. Wow. These dances are interspersed with readings of romantic verse, prose, and songs of love sung by skilled minstrels. Such rituals tend to break up into private gatherings, though bards are always on hand to relate tales of courtly love or mysteries of Faerun for those who do not like socializing more privately. 
I did buy the D&D cookbook, and it's based on a hero's feast. I did not see the Feast of Love in there yet. I'm still reading oh, it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It sounds like, uh, it would be it sounds there, like the hero's, it should the be in there. hero's feast adjacent. It does. It really feast, does. Feast of Love, specifically for things involving love. Indeed. So you're not eating a lot of carbs. You're not eating a lot I mean, of. Like, they did list a lot of carbs. I, it makes they? me wonder how they stay so beautiful. Oh wait, because yeah, there's a lot right. of carbs. There's a lot of carbs. Well, well, they're doing a lot of cardio. <laughs> Fuck yeah, they are. <laughs> Sunnis clerics pray in the morning after a refreshing scented bath and do so by standing in a pool or bath and looking into a mirror lit only by natural light or candles. Sunni sends guidance to them by visions visible in the mirror, often by alternating or altering the reflection of the worshiper in some way. Oh, okay. Interesting. The Sunnite church's organization is both loose and informal, and its leadership changes regularly within the whims of its clergy. The most attractive and charismatic Sunnite clergy are usually the high clerics. Little is thought of a cleric dropping everything and going bounding off to the wilds, though, particularly if the goal is some beautiful object or some beautiful individual. And such behavior creates little scandal in the church, but also many power vacuums. Yeah, literally. Follow <laughs> which they gen, which they didn't then fill. Follow your heart. Yeah, and exactly. Then, like someone else is going to follow their heart because yeah. they've been wanting that job. Exactly. And they put that thing out in the forest for you to go find. <laughs> it's and now true. it's their time oh to shine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the politics of the Sunite temples. Um, it's really easy, but also complicated. Yeah, so we're saying. All right. Sunite temples are either stunningly beautiful edifices of fantastic design or classically elegant structures strategically enhanced by sculptured landscaping, constructed with numerous picturesque paths and prom promenades and surprising and enchanting nooks in which to share moments of love, beauty, and passion. Excellent. Temples dedicated to Sunni are most common in human lands, and they frequently serve as public baths or places of relaxation. So they also have like a uh, pragmatic use to the community. Okay. Yeah. A temple uses, usually features a mirrored and well-lit salon where folks can spruce themselves up as well as see others and be seen. Where a temple doesn't exist or in a large city where the nearest temple might be too far to walk to, a small shrine to Sunni often stands near a street corner. These sites consist of a mirror hung beneath a small roof where one can say a prayer while checking one's appearance. The spot might feature a shelf or cupboard holding various perfumes and cosmetics so that those without the funds to purchase such items can still make themselves feel beautiful. That's cool. This is like the anti-demon lord god. It's super the anti-demon. That's exactly what I was thinking this whole time. Like This is like the opposite of every demon lord I've ever heard of. Love. Smells good. Yeah, it smells good. It smells so good. It smells good. It's basically all Wants you, you to smell good. Wants you to smell good. Wants everything to smell good. <laughs> that is the opposite of a demon lord. Mm -hmm. Man. Yep. They make D&D smell bad. Something's yeah. got to tip, tip the scale back. It's true. And that's what Sunni's here for. <laughs> so we've talked about the church's dogma and practices, but not much about their place in the adventuring and dungeoneering side of the world of D&D. Sunni has orders of clerics and paladins on the more adventuring side of things as well. First and foremost among those is the order known as the Heart Warders. Okay. So Heart Warders are specialty priests devoted to the goddess Sunni. Heart warders follow the teachings of Lady Firehair by encouraging love and enjoyment in all things in life. They are considered the high priests of Sunni. Heart warders often serve wealthy patrons in the great cities found throughout the realms. They in turn are aided in their efforts to help bring uh, together men and women seeking love and intimacy as well as to bring uh, pure pleasure through art, music, and other enjoyable pursuits. These are the little cupids. Are they wearing diapers and shooting bow and arrows as well? No. No, okay. they Wearing Hermes sandals. They, they're they usually wearing like kind of dope robes or even like a little bit of chain armor because they, they go out and fight too. I can I just can't not picture them as sort of cherubic, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, little I don't blame cheeks. you. I do not blame you, not one bit. Little baby face heart warmers. Oh, gosh. Little, they little often work cheekies. as matchmakers, etiquette instructors, artists, or teachers in a myriad of creative disciplines such as visual arts, dance, performance art, vocal and instrumental music, personal beautification, and social etiquette. They are also the most likely to work as active adventurers seeking beauty and art lost in the world and bringing it back to be shared with all. Also most likely to be part of like an essential oil pyramid scheme is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, though pacifists at heart, sometimes heart warders are forced to take a less peaceful route and directly oppose all forms of cruelty, cruelty and tyranny. Although heart warders do not relish battle, they can accept that sometimes the passion associated with beauty and joy cannot be preserved by any other means. When combat arises, they typically choose to shield others from harm rather than go on the offensive. Because of Sunni's love of joy and distaste for violence, many of the abilities learned and used by heart warders avoid any form of direct harm and instead focus on charming opponents or healing allies. 
In some cases, this can lead to their opponents feeling remorse and subsequent reluctance in engaging them in battle, and a violent encounter can be stopped even as it, even before it's begun, which seems rare depending on who you're fighting, but maybe maybe that works. Uh, yeah, so this particular paragraph of your notes spoke to me as you were oh, yeah? reading it. Yeah. Let me hit you with this. Okay. Uh, Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, is a heart warder? Like... The beauty, like he's like, yes, he's like beauty definitely. sculpting himself. Oh, yeah, to absolutely. Be, yeah. Yes, 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 absolutely. Excellent. Very much so. Yeah. Armstrong's a heart warder for sure. <laughs> um, heart warders have a few abilities unique to their holy order. They can magically inspire confidence in their friends and allies, granting them a boost to their innate charisma and magnetism. Um, through divine grace, heart warders' tears can be magically changed into the waters of Evergold. Evergold is a sacred crystal fountain and its surrounding pool found in the middle of the crystal palace of the elven goddess of beauty, Hanalei Selenel, within the realm of Arvander on Arborea, evidence that Suni and her are one and the same. Holy sh... What the fuck kind of... <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of data. Yeah, it was a lot of data I dropped right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the tears can be turned into waters of Evergold, water that is holy to Sunites. This solution is deadly to opponents that suffer from a vulnerability to holy water, with more experience, heart warders can use also use their tears to make a love potion valued highly by the faithful. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a weird power, bro. Yeah. Uh, a big flex, yeah. though. Some heart warders can charge their kiss with rapturous power, Whoa. bringing sensations of complete pleasure to any they bestow it upon. Oh, my God. The kiss blesses those it touches, granting them increased resistance against magical effects for a short duration. A heart warder's kiss is so potent that it can even confuse and daze the recipient. Jeez, man, we're really earning that explicit tag on this one, aren't we? It's just a kiss, bro. I've been playing, a, yeah, sure. I've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild, and <laughs> this sounds like great fairy, uh, oh, great fairy yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, it super does. Your clothes. Absolutely. I, the, I'm mostly picturing the big sloppy kiss. She gets, she's yeah. like, Mwah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's all my clothes are all wet. The church also has a small affiliated knightly order of fighters, paladins, and bards who serve uh, as te- guard, serve to guard temples and holy sites along with the clergy, and who sometimes pursue, que- pursue quests or do good works in Sunni's name to promote her faith. This knightly order is called the Sisters and Brothers of the Ruby Rose. Oh, cool. To become one of the Sisters and Brothers of the Ruby Rose, a candidate must stand vigil in a church of Sunni for an entire night. If the Lady Firehair appears to the candidate in a vision during the night or somehow shows her favor, the candidate is admitted into the order. Members in this order are given to writing essays and songs of courtly love when not engaged in a vital business and often adopt a beautiful individual to adore from afar, whether that individual would be flattered by such intentions or not. So a little creepy, but I guess it is supposed to reflect a Guinevere Lancelot thing just okay, yeah. without the betrayal, cheating, and tragedy. Bit. Sure, that, yeah. that would be nice. But like the, the admiring from afar, that courtly love, I think it's supposed to represent that. This is kind of funny also. It's like, yeah. go stand out there and like if you see her, let us know. And yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. I stood out here all if, fucking if you night. See like, you're like really feel those feelings ring, ring this little bell yeah that and then yeah. we'll let you in and you can do these <laughs> essays dog because we, we the, the power vacuum real mm. go out there and have a vision for us tonight okay please. we really need somebody to secretary up please do <laughs> <laughs> so where does suni live this is an excellent question i do not know the answer to what not <laughs> like the celestial plane or whatever so she has been all over the place and the forgotten realms chronology is not fun to navigate when you have uh, when you haven't read any of the novels. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is probably something yeah. that does exist in yeah. like the novel verse. And then on top, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> right. On top of that, uh, the Forgotten Realms wiki itself is written in constant past tense, which I understand why, because it's the constantly changing chronology. So yeah. like, everything has to be in past tense. Right. And all of the five E source books try and ignore that fourth edition ever ha- even happened whenever <laughs> possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure someone in the audience does know, but all I can do is tell you where she has reportedly lived before and after the spell plague. Uh, but where she is now, I'm not exactly sure. So okay, yeah. I mean that's fair enough. We yeah. hit you with some locations mm-hmm. yeah. that you can keep or discard. Yeah. So originally, Suni dwelled in the celestial plane of Brightwater, located in Arvander, one of the three layers of the chaotic good upper plane of Arborea. Brightwater was a fully urban realm in which recklessness, luck, and impulsiveness rule the day. Mm. This is notable considering that the rest of Arvander is considered a place of endless forests and wild, open wild spaces. So it's like this weird kind of beautiful city in the middle of all this wildness. Yeah. Yeah. Still, Brightwater had all the natural beauty of Arvander, albeit less wild and more gentrified, with stately mansions, summer homes, winter retreats, beach cabins, cottages in the woods, and happy houses, uh, great and small. 
However, this plane was not well known for its quiet solitude, but rather for rollicking adventure, industrious business dealings, thematic parties, thrilling romance, games of chance, roving bands of revelers, and joyous celebration. So yeah. This was like, I, like like Vegas, but not. I'm not sure. I pictured uh, like Rolling Hills, kind of like in sure. one of the. You, you described basically SoCal, where everything, mm-hmm. all these places are an hour away or whatever, but. I, I pictured like rolling hills and you're walking with your lover mm-hmm. or what have you, since this is the theme we're going yeah, with. Sure. And, uh, you know, on tops, on the tops of these hills are, you know, estates and such right. where they're throwing parties and you can kind of hear like the echoes oh, of people. Oh, I like people. that. I like this. Yeah. Imagery. Yeah, absolutely. So you could be walking down like a cobbled street and like, kind of hear, you know, the raucousness of this place or like see couples here and there like strewn throughout or mm-hmm. like people drinking out in the street maybe or mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, I like that. So besides Sunni, uh, Joaquin, goddess of wealth, Sheris, the demigoddess of hedonism, Timora, the goddess of luck, and Lyra, goddess of joy, also dwelled in Brightwater. So did Henelil Selenil. God, I tongue twister. But as we have established, they are probably the same person. So Right. <laughs> no shit, she lived there. <laughs> uh, only Devas, Planetars, Solars, and other angels that served the goddesses were native to Brightwater, and the rest of the inhabitants were either petitioners or visitors looking for a good time. Petitioners, celebrants, gamblers, lovers, and tycoons were allowed to travel freely here, but had to exercise cause, caution on this plane because too much revelry could have possibly fatal consequences here. Mm. When a wandering band of merrymakers come close enough to a visitor, their enthusiasm uh, can be so intoxicating uh, that mortals find it hard to resist joining the party themselves. And then all of a and, sudden they're just doing too many drugs. Yeah. If they were to succumb to these, they would be swept away in the throng and have the time of their lives refusing to leave voluntarily. But the food and drink in any of the outer planes doesn't really give sustenance. And uh, they would eventually collapse from malnutrition and die. Oh, dang. So they're yeah. just like eating for yeah. the flavor, yeah. like the pleasure of eating. But yeah. You don't get full. Is that the sort of thing that happens? You're getting nothing. It's well, you're spiritual eat, food. You're eating the spirit. So your spirit feels good. Your spirit feels great. It's like. But you have a body if you're there, if you're immortal, if you're not dead. Right. You know, so like. This sounds like when I binge eat Oreos, except <laughs> I don't have the caloric deficit. <laughs> yeah, you know? kind of. I suppose so. It's it's more related than it should be. Okay. Okay. So I've been talking about uh, th- all this in past tense because in 4E, the spell plague happened and Brightwater was said to have been destroyed. So oh. Only, the spell plague. I see. Yeah. So only a small portion of Brightwater survived the spell plague, and Saloon, goddess of the moon, uh, invited Sunni and her exarchs to join her uh, in the gates of the moon, a lair in the chaotic good, chaotic neutral plane of Isgar. This version of Brightwater is a singular romantic city. Now, I don't know if this is still the setup for Sunni, because 5e did a lot of work to reset the realms to pre 4 stuff, so like... We pretend like the spell play kind of didn't happen. But right, okay. I couldn't find any fiber sources clarifying on the subject of Sunni. There just really hasn't been anything written. Or if there was, I missed it. I couldn't find it. So okay. I did not just maybe someone knows. I'm sure someone can tell us. Do you so. think uh Saloon, goddess of the moon, always like <laughs> introduces herself like, I, with her I'm full Saloon, title? Goddess of the moon. I'm Saloon, well Saloon's goddess another moon. goddess who's like five goddesses. Like she's Saloon, but she's also Sahanin Moonbow. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, she's like two people. I remember so, that. That yeah. was a uh, some elf shit, right? Yeah, What's elf- up with the elf lore? All being like, no, we have special names for our gods, but they're the same fucking. It's gods. because they were originally like when they were made, like everyone had their own pantheon. But right. Then that's right. people thought, well, that's kind of weird. What if like we just like fuse all these gods? I worship who I want. Yeah, basically, <laughs> so, became a god of all peoples. Um, not in five E, but uh, in second and third edition, Sunni has been statted out, and it's of course it's ridiculous. She's a greater goddess. Yeah. Okay. So she has been statted out as a level twenty sorcerer, level ten bard, level ten cleric, on top of already being an inherently powerful. Powerful celestial outsiders, uh, outsider. So, like, as a celestial outsider, her base stats are like a challenge rating twenty something creature, right. and then she has all these class levels on top of it. Yeah, and just not even to mention like those three different types of magic that are really pulling. You know, yeah, that spell list is got to be intense. Yeah, that's like raw arcana, the weave, the we, yeah, the uh, music, Radiance. and also divine. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking at 800 HP, 84, 84 AC. Let me call it with my 10 levels of bard. Yeah. I will call upon the echoes of creation. <laughs> Plus 70 to hit with range spells. Fuck. Ability scores of a strength of 24. So she buff. Uh, Dexterity 28, Constitution 25, Intelligence 24, Wisdom of 35, and Charisma of 50. Yeah, man. She is 50 Charisma. 
Yeah, I mean, like sorcerer bard, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna. She's gotta... got <laughs> so many spell slots. I didn't count them all. I wrote a million. It's not actually a million, but so many spell slots, and a host of inherent magical abilities. I would love to fight her one day. Uh, hopefully, they come up with some five E stats. That'd be fun. Uh, like, why stat these things? Like a player, why why make anybody deal with a plus seventy to hit? Right. It's well, because you gotta do Jaeger, remember you gotta Jaeger these things. You gotta true. get inside these gotta gods Jaeger. and drive them like cars and kill bad guys. I will say you gotta remember that the, the plus seventy hit, this is for previous editions where that's for third edition, I think, specifically. So the numbers are bigger there. Yeah, okay. I think the numbers by the time you get to level twenty, like the numbers are like three times as big as what they would be in five E. Well let's let's get let's cut it in half. Let's call it thirty five for five E. What are we doing? Well, I would go as I would go as far as to say cut it into a third, and it's still what like that's a plus twenty six or something, plus twenty four. Yeah, you plus you ro- rolling twenty three. You roll a five, it's like no yeah, contest. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the way it should be. I yeah, mean, yeah, but still. But if you look at that, like okay, like so her AC is eighty four, and her hit is plus seventy, so she's fighting another god that's in that same realm. Like she would have to roll a fourteen to hit herself. Oh yeah, and I mean when you're scaling it like yeah, that, that exactly. makes sense. Right, exactly. So, so. any questions about Suni? Um, no, uh, no, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, Suni's great. They like, really, I had a lot of fun with this. They really. I don't know if this is you uh-huh. going out of your way or if it's just kind of the way this character is written. Uh-huh. They really go out of their way to like not directly mention sexual yes, stuff because she's not the goddess of sex. No, she but that's the goddess of definitely. Love. Sex involved and, in this sure absolutely but there's like the goddess of hedonism that's where you go if you want like a whole episode about sex which if i'm you, not gonna do we're no, not doing yeah that. so that, okay that's <laughs> what i wanted to talk about at the end yeah. of the episode here is like when you sit down with this at your table mm-hmm. it's not the goddess of hedonism it's the mm-hmm. goddess the goddess of love but yeah. like that kind of stuff's going to be involved so this is going to be uncomfortable for a lot of um i mean we're in like a, a male dominated hobby i feel like right yeah uh, unfortunately yeah it, it should be different like, not that the hobby is unfortunate it's just that it's no 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 yeah. I'm just talking about the stigma that surrounds this yeah, game absolutely. like absolutely yes, so yes, yes a lot of players are gonna have trouble with this I feel like mm, just based mm-hmm, off of mm-hmm. do we have any tips for um, like let's say you're at a table with I guess I should say know your players sure and yes. this isn't for everybody's table clearly I mean maybe or maybe not like I I just I find it so odd that that we have to have this conversation. She's a goddess of love. Love I know, should be something yeah. that we should just be able to talk about, and it's okay. Like, yeah, yeah it shouldn't make anyone uncomfortable or be weird. And Suni is awesome, and I would love to be a clear Suni. I think if you're going to use this, you need to approach it with that sort of confidence. It definitely. Yeah, there like, we go. Yeah. Do, do it and own it, and yeah. like do let, it, let own your, it, love it. If you need to have a conversation be with your players beforehand, hey, I'm going to do this, you know. Make sure everybody is comfortable with that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I suppose so. Sure. Like, probably don't flirt with your party members. If, See, you know, that's yeah, where, exactly. where are we... Yeah. Yeah, you want to I would imagine that a, Su- a Sunni priest or priestess um, is totally about consent in every way, shape, and form. And oh, not, sure. I'm not yeah. interested in flirting with anyone who doesn't want their attention. I would hope so. Yes. Um, th- so, th- that's the thing. is like, one of the more difficult parts of Dungeons and Dragons with your friends mm-hmm. is like role playing romance and yes. like how to do that appropriately. And, the only uh, way the way that I handle romance in D D is literally the player needs to be like, hey, I want this character to experience a romance. Yeah, okay. And so like maybe there maybe we should introduce them to this kind of character or this kind of character or, you know, surprise me, but like you know, it's a conversation you got to have, and so it's got to be pre-planned. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. To a certain extent. I really like the way Patrick Rothfuss kind of handles the romance in Name of the Wind. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems good. It's not too. It's not. It's really um, sincere. Yes. And it's really well thought out, especially so. with like a lot of the wordplay between the romantic characters and stuff yes. like that. But even the side characters that are not Kavoth or whoever mm-hmm. have really good romantic relationships. Especially in the, in the second book, yeah. and I'm, I'm part honest. of that is just because Kvothe himself is such a lover, like he right. loves love. That's part Kvothe of it. is like right? a Sunni priest, basically. Yeah, yes. like he's got a yeah. lot of that inside of yes. him, and so and he perfect. wants everything to be beautiful and perfect. And so that's how he, yeah, that's and how he like describes su- everything. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the visuals, and, and that's a good way to bring beauty to your table is to describe everything vividly. Yes. And if I were to run like uh, a Sunite, 
it would be a bard. I wouldn't do a cleric. I'd be like, this is a bard, but they're a priest of Sunni. Sure, yeah, yeah. in name, yeah. not in casting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's totally a cool way to do it. You don't, you don't have to be a cleric to be a chosen one of God no, or whatever. No, not at all. Um, so, yeah, those those are some, some really great ideas, like purvey. You don't have to do the details a lot of the time, which nah. is another thing I was going to touch on is you don't have to dive deep into – like a physical romantic scene, unless that's no. what you're doing yeah. at your table. Yes. That's all fine. Yeah. But I, I feel like, especially the tables that I've sat at, that's not something that we're nah. trying to particularly do. No. I feel like it would be fun to do romance one day, yeah. but in this way where, and then you walk off and blah, blah, blah. And we're not going to talk about that part. It's the next day. Boom. Yeah. Let's I go. mean, like you guys had a wonderful night together and like, that's your adventure, not the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Some advice to give to maybe people in real life, too. Right, yeah. Your adventure. Well, I think we can get ready uh, for our long rest. Yeah. And let's do that. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the long rest where we are building our beholder. It's year of the beholder, and we are building a beholder episode by episode, piece by piece, feature by feature, eye stock by eye stock, bim by bim. Let's do it. Well, what do we got? We got Sune. Suni on the yeah, list today. We do, we do. All about beauty. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need, I think you should go first. Okay. You're going to take the the eye beam power yes, I'm doing this time. I'll yes. take the feature. Okay. Sounds and good. My feature is conceptualized very lightly and I want to I okay. talk it out. So let's okay. get let's get the, the, the ability out of the way. way. All yeah. right. So the, the beam we're going for is a beautification beam, which looks like a stream of magical hearts. Yes. Cascade upon the target and beautify them and put them in their most beautiful state that they could possibly exist in, but also give them advantage on all charisma checks and saves and all that other stuff. So it's more of a, it's a beam for the beholders, uh, benefactors, if you will. Okay. Now check this out. We're going to do something with beauty Uh in the eye of the beholder. Okay. All right. So. Oh my God. Let's go with a really long eyelashes. (laughs) There we go. I like that. Just the most luscious lashes. The, I don't know if you are aware of like what a trend, especially the day we're recording this episode in uh-huh. time right now, mm-hmm. what a huge trend it is to be, put big old fakey eyelashes on for uh, particularly for girls at my work. Um, they just put in fake. They, they're, yeah. they have an appointment. Go get the fake eyelashes. They're huge. Mm-hmm. They're like really, really huge. Robust oh, eyelashes. Yeah, like very, comically big. Uh, we're getting there. Okay, because yeah. I mean, I've, it's I've dated one, some girls that did fake lashes, but it looked great. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not saying it looks like it. Does, like this, this beholder, we're going to have it cartoonish and exaggerated. Yeah. I'm so thinking it, they like are the longest comic. lashes. I like, mean, it's automatically comic literally because it's foot a, long lashes. It has to be yeah, right. Minimum. Absolutely. So yeah, it's going to like. Look, when oh, this beholder blinks, there's like a slight puff of wind. A Volkswagen Beetle. Sometimes yes! they put those eyelashes on. Yes, yes, yes. On. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like those. All right. Um, Luscious lashes and a beautification ray. I love it. Yeah. And the beholder has to make a monthly appointment to get them redu- retouched. Okay, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, we'll go ahead and add that to the list. Um, if you like this, this show. This beholder is an amalgamation. It's getting there for sure. It yeah. does something positive. which It is does, which was unexpected. Make you beautiful. Yeah. Uh, whatever that means uh it, may, it will probably affect your soul and it probably outside. makes you look like whatever your idyllic idea of beauty is okay yeah and definitely clean it's going to clean you unless like you really are into <laughs> looking dirty i don't you know you love looking like yeah. gra- like you, you like looking gracie yeah, yeah sure. that's fine yeah whatever We're about whatever, it. whatever floats your boat we're about love we here on the dungeon cast especially on this episode if you love us and what we do here there are a few ways you can support us and the first and foremost is to tell people about the show help spread the word get that dungeon love out there mm-hmm. the second thing you can do is go to our patreon patreon.com slash the dungeon cast and support us uh monetarily on kind of like a monthly thing that's super duper helpful we're able to like make moves and do stuff that we got to do uh, because of you guys on Patreon, and we like to make really cool bonus content to flood the Patreon with extra stuff for you guys to watch. If you like the Dungeon Cast or Super Quest Saga, or any like live play kind of thing we do, if you like our, where our imagination, our imaginations are at, you can go delve into all the crazy things we do on Patreon, live games, um, the Dungeon Chats, some like a. I don't even know what to call the dungeon chats. It's not on a regular schedule, but it's more than a month, once a month now. It's like a banter slash behind the scenes podcast that we do like. Shoot the shit podcast. Almost once a month. Yeah, um, because we record once every three weeks. We try to get one in unless we're doing like an extra project. Which we've done quite a few. We've done a couple extra projects lately, but it's still going to be 
you know, it's on there. That's a five bucks a month, and you get some live game stuff yeah, too. It's just a, an extra podcast. The first season of F Bats I forgot was in that another tier. extra podcast. Yeah, another extra. There's a whole fucking. There's several shows. If you <laughs> like this show, you can go get several shows. We release on Patreon as much as we can. It's not like a regular thing. Yeah, we're it's, at our limit. Just know that we're constantly trying to put new stuff. Yeah, but there's exclusive merch on there. At the, as early as the ten dollar tier, you can get a cool sticker, which we should update the art for the year of the beholder stuff. I gotta remember to do that. Yes. And then um, at twenty dollars a month, you can get our our, our new mug, uh, the indeed stylized mug. indeed. Yeah, indeed mug. Indeed mug. With a nice TDCI. Yeah, that's right. Pretty cool stuff on there. Um, and we're working on more things that we can do in the Patreon. But like we said, we're we kind of like to push ourselves to the limit here, scheduling wise. We do what we can. Um, check us out on social media. Um, you know, Twitter, Instagram. There's a link below for our Discord. And anything else that we missed that you want to touch on, Will? Do we have a new no. contest? Oh, God. We, we do. I just don't know what it is yet. We're on, let's figure that out before we record the next episode. Okay. Um, we have a new contest. You'll probably see it on social you know media. No, let's figure it out right now. Cause, We're going like, to figure out the contest yeah, right now. Uh, I'm going to tell you the rules for the contest right now, and then Will will tell you the prize when I'm done telling you the rules. Yeah. The rules for the contest are gonna, going to be um, tweet a link of a video or uh, episode oh, yeah. of our podcast okay. Or our Patreon or anything that's associated with us with hashtag DungeonCast, and you will be entered to win. Um, Candlekeep Mysteries is going to be an adventure right. anthology coming out, I believe, in March. Yes. Um, it's for levels one through 16. And I think it's, uh, let me, anthology of 17 mystery themed adventures for the world's greatest role playing game. And what I've been reading is that it's wheelchair accessible, which I think is really cool. Um, so, <laughs> for sure. uh, ooh, that alt cover looks fucking gorgeous i know yeah we, so you're you're gonna win the alt cover because it looks amazing yeah that's what we like to do here is yeah. give you we like sick awesome sick ass good ass art here mm. on the dungeon cast and um dnd definitely does it well the the regular covers are cool mm. but the alt covers are definitely stand out um it's yeah. pretty apparent so this comes one. out on march 16th so that's when we're going to announce our winner so between now and march 16th uh, do what Brian said about Instagram and no, uh, I, I said anything? Twitter. I didn't even oh, say you Instagram. Said Twitter? Oh, I'm not in charge of Instagram anymore. Which, no, you're not. Oh, but like, God, you should still God. tell them how to do the contest. Are know? we going to keep the same rules? It's up I, to you, man. It, well, it's not. <laughs> it's not up to me. Well, I relinquish that the power. Per, the person who is in charge isn't here for us to ask. So you got to make something up now. Okay. And then um, we'll coordinate with her. Later. We'll just do. This will be the. I don't know if this is still a good way to run our contest on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a specialist come in and work that we, out. But yeah. for this one, let's just do what we've been doing, which is um, go ahead and hit the like. Make sure you're following the Instagram account, the Dungeon Cast. Mm -hmm. uh, hit the like on the post associated with the contest mm -hmm. and then tag somebody in a comment below and let them know, um, you know, to check us out. This is pretty much a thing. There so the way it should work is we should you should be allowed to comment uh, as many times in separate comments as you want, tagging a different person, and that will count as an entry. Indeed. Um, the whole idea about our contest is to help with some exposure and to give back. So, um, yeah, if you got, it's, it's basically tell people about the Dungeon Cast and, you know, there's something in it for you, something physical. Not just having your friends be in on this dope podcast that we all love. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all we got. That was all a really right. fun episode, Will. Thanks for all the love, Doctor, in <laughs> that no you did. No problem. And um, I think we can call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>